Uh, Wes, you guys played them tight in the first. What was the main difference in the second half there? Uh, I think they picked it up um, on both ends. They, they were aggressive. Uh, they're a really good team. You know, we, we allowed uh, our defense to kind of anchor us in the first half. Didn't score well. We only scored 51 points. Um, the offensive woes, I thought, in the third, you know, we had that stretch where um, trading baskets, we weren't really getting stops. Uh, we had the turnover from out of bounds, and it just, you know, down three, the turnover, and that just got them going. Um, I thought we kind of let go of the rope defensively, and it just ignited their offense. Um, with your guards, KCP, Beal, and Spencer tonight, um, slow starts for all of them. It didn't look like it was just shots that weren't going in, but what did you see from those guys? Yeah, I mean, it's bottom line, we all have to be better, um, you know, from the, from the start. We, we can't afford to think we can ease our way into games, especially against a team like this. Um, they're elite offensively, and they're a very talented defensive team. So that was kind of the messaging going forward. Let's set the tone, you know, and I, I don't think we did that. I know it's kind of hard to ask, but how, I guess, why do you think if, if that is the mentality, we can't ease ourselves in games, why do you think that's lingered until now? That's a good question. I mean, we've been trying to, we've been searching for a while, honestly. Um, and and that, that hasn't always been the case, but we you know play well, start games well, and then we have these lulls. Um, so we got to figure it out. And it's, you know, I'm not saying they, we, um, you know, I got to do a better job of trying to find a, a way to help them. Um, but we also have to make sure that, you know, game starts, we're ready to play, we're ready to go uh, and understand who we're playing and, and what that may bring. What can you guys do to, uh, to combat the, the size and the pick and roll that you know, they, a team like this has with Gobert and Whiteside? Well, it's a problem. I mean, we, we did a little bit of everything, trying to be up, be down, be dropping, uh, try to play it two on two. We switched. Um, you know, the fear of the three is really kind of what distorts a lot of that. You know, and they scored a, a bunch of points in the paint in the second half, I think 40 in the paint. But um, you know, because they stretch you out, you know, you want to kind of try and limit, you know, the, the scramble situations and the live ball closeouts. You want to be down the floor and hopefully enticing some of those tough contested mid-range twos. Um, but, you know, they're used to the team's garden. And, you know, that big gets behind you. And, you, you know, they're athletically and their length and size, it's, they're just on the rim. Speaking of threes, you had uh, Davis and Corey both start out two for two. It's the first time this year they both made multiple threes, and then they were over from four three from there. Um, what, did, what did they take those guys out of the game, or do you think you guys could have done a better job of finding the books? I think both. Uh, they, you know, they're going to try and top lock, keep those shooters from coming up the floor. They did it all night to Brad. Um, but yeah, we we got to find ways to you know once those guys get going to keep them going. Um, you know, sometimes it sounds easier than than it is, but uh, when they're able to generate open uh, open shots and you see them go in, um, we got to stay with that. And after the last game, Brad said that he needs to cut down his turnovers. Um, he had six of them tonight. Uh, what's your take on just his turnover issues this year? I mean, I, he's aware of it. I mean, we've talked about it. I think he's – some of them are, you know, the, the pressure that teams put on him. They, they double him. They, um, they hit and they blitz. But, you know, sometimes it's just – I think sometimes careless. Um, sometimes he's playing in a crowd, trying to over dribble, do too much. Um, and it's not because he's selfish. He's trying to make a play. He's trying to get himself going. He's trying to get us going. And, you know, at times it's it's tough because the team's going to key in on him. They're going to shrink and, and show multiple bodies. Hey, Coach, I know we talked about this the other day, but the team started off, you know, 10 and 3, a really uh, strong record. And lately there have been more losses, I guess. What is the identity of the team right now? It's not where it should be, honestly. Um, you know, we have to get back to you know playing in, you know at that pace, the, the level of physicality, the, the the attention to detail, the focus, the purpose, uh, and all those things are you can't you know quantify them. But when you watch those games, you watch the film, and how we played is different. Uh, you know, I've, I've said it before. I think our offense has been good at times during this stretch where we haven't played great, and we've kind of let go of some of the defensive you know, presence that we had early in the year. That was our anchor, and we have to find a way to get back to that. Josh? Wes, uh, right up through, I guess, the early part of the fourth quarter, it seemed like your team had taken a relatively low number of threes. Uh, 
relative to what they attempted earlier in the year. Are you happy, or uh, with the with the shot selection in uh, in terms of uh, taking fewer threes? Uh, no, not really. I mean, some of it is the the way teams are guarding us. You know, teams that uh, where the bigs are down in pick and rolls, they're they're dropping, so they're 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 not tagging. There's no need to tag. So they want to entice you into those mid range pull ups, or you got to make a play at the rim. Uh, so some of it is coverage, um, you know, the, the quick catch and shoots at times we saw tonight, it was, it was uh, efficient for us, but I don't know if you can live with that, you know, in moving them from side to side, attacking, getting more paint threes, the driving kicks threes, the, um, those type, you know, three pointers. I think those are more the, the efficient type. And those are the ones I thought we were generating earlier in the year. Thank you. Neil? Hey, Coach, from an, when you guys have your offensive lulls, do you think that's a byproduct of you guys have not put in your full system yet and teams are able to catch on to, you know, the limited amount of plays you have? Or do you think it's a matter of, you know, the team still getting accustomed to it and maybe the complexity of your system is hurting them at times? No, I mean, we've actually dumbed it down. You know, part of that's because we're trying to get guys up to speed. We're playing other guys out of position. Um, and the, the thought process is less is more. Let's really get good at, you know, executing certain things. And we haven't done that. Um, so that that's part of the issue. Um, you know, some of it is our attention to detail. Against the good def defensive teams, we can't just walk into setups. There has to be a change of pace. There has to be a little bit more timing and purpose. Uh, we have to screen bodies. We have to do a better job with our physicality on the offensive end. Um, and then, you know, when we do come on the floor after a timeout, we can't blow those plays. We have to understand what we're looking to do. All five guys have to be locked in, and at times we're not. So, you know, you, you couple all those things together, and you start seeing some of those blows that you were talking about. With some of the issues seemingly becoming thematic, who are the people in the locker room that are, you know, doing that self-policing um, that was so talked about early on in the season? I mean, it's the same guys. I mean, you know, whether it's Trez, Brad, um, you know, obviously Kyle, um, all, all those guys at some point, you know, and, and we need more of it. I mean, I think it's, you know, it starts with them being more accountable um, to each other, but also holding each other accountable. Thanks, Coach. Last question to Wayne. How you doing, Coach? Uh, essentially, Joel, Isaiah, and Cass has pretty much played two games today. Uh, can you see that confidence trend translating for them? Well, I think anytime they're able to get live reps, it's 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 good for them. Um, you know, to be part of this, I think is great. Uh, they're young guys, so you know, playing two games is you know is it's not the end of the world. I think it's probably good for them. Um, but the more reps we can get, you know, in, in our system, um, that commonality and synergy, I think it it, it it'll benefit them greatly. Um, at some point. You know, we hope they'll, they'll take that transition and be part of us, uh, you know, on a full-time basis. So time will tell. But anytime they have opportunity to play, um, I think it's, uh, it's good. And lastly, Coach, you have a, a lot of uh, role games coming up. Uh, can, this, can, a, can a trip like this bring a team together and, and see what you're really made of? Sure. I mean, I think anytime you're on the road, it's just it's your group. That's it. You know, it's just kind of that us-against-the-world mentality. Um, and I'm hoping that we, we pull together and find a way to um, attack these road games with the right mindset. Um, they're winnable. We have some tough opponents. There's no doubt. But we've played against, um, you know, high-level opponents and we played well. So there's no excuse for us not to uh, approach it that way. Um, it's a good opportunity for us. Um, and we know this month has been, you know, a grind. Uh, we're in the middle of a 17-game, 31-day stretch. So, um, you know, the mental fatigue, physical fatigue, um, you know, being out on the road, home for a couple of days and back out, it's life in the NBA. Nobody cares. Nobody's feeling sorry for us. So we got to find a way to pull it together and uh, right the ship. Thank you, Coach. That's it, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate your time. Come on, man. What do you think was the main difference? Are we ready to go? Okay. Oh, okay. Um, um, what do you think is the main difference from first to the second half tonight? Um, 
Yeah, I can't really put a finger on it. I mean, we had a great first half and kind of came out, let go of the rope in the second. It was a bit tough, you know, shots weren't falling and stuff. So pretty sure it was a lot of guys that was kind of frustrated with that. And it just kind of fell apart from there, you know, something that we could have easily fixed. But at the time, there was a lot of frustration out there. Guys weren't hitting shots. So, you know, it happens. What was their defense doing to make it hard on you? I know you kind of scored a lot in the paint, but especially in the second half, it seems like they uh, that's where they won it. Um, really just making us uncomfortable, speeding us up and making us do things that we don't normally do, you know, um, putting a lot of pressure on Brad, keeping like the main guys that do scoring on the floor, you know, in a bind to really just, I would say, get into the flow. You know, trying to keep trying to make guys uncomfortable and keep them from doing the things that they usually do. They kept us from playing, you know, as a team. You know, there's a lot of things that happened out there on the floor. We turned the ball over, you know. Um, there's a lot of times where shots weren't falling. Like I said, it was a lot of frustration. And at the end of the day, it was just a lot of frustration out there on the floor for sure. How are teams attacking your defense differently now than they did earlier this season? Um I mean I really can't even put a finger on that. You know, um, the things that I see, you know, it's a lot of times where guys get downhill and they draw attention from me with, you know, trying to go protect the rim and stuff. And, you know, the big is always down low by himself. That's one thing. And just really just attacking us on pick and roll, stringing us out and finding guys on the perimeter. Yeah, pick and roll tonight. Obviously, they, they have two uh, big front court players, Gobert and uh, Whiteside. What made them so difficult tonight? Um, no idea. I mean, it was a, it was just tough. And all in all, it was just really tough. Something that we could have fixed, but at the time, it really just didn't fall into place like we needed it to. And I, I don't know if we'll talk to you tomorrow for practice, but you got another tough challenge coming up with uh, Nikola Jokic. Mm -hmm. um, kind of what stands out about that that matchup for you? Um, just come ready to play. It's the main thing. He's physical. He does a lot of things for a guy his size that, you know, you rarely see in a five man. So really just stepping up to the challenge and, you know, not letting him do the things that he's comfortable with doing, which is going to be hard. But night in, night out, I come out to play ball and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try my best to do whatever it takes to help us win the game. Uh, I asked Coach West this as well, but how would you describe the team's identity right now? Um. Trying to figure it out. You know, there's ups and downs. We have a lot of obstacles in our way. And we're trying to get over that. And we got to take it one day at a time. We're working as a team to figure the things out and get us back to the position to where we were when we were having fun playing instead of having a lot of frustration on the floor. Right. So what do you think what do you think it should be, I guess? For sure, high energy. What we what you saw in the first half tonight. That's what it should be. Josh. When Kuz can't play, what does the team miss from him? I mean, you know, Kuz is a high scorer. He comes out and he plays with high energy night in, night out. He's a shooter. And for sure, you know, one piece that was missing, I mean, he comes in and he rebounds and he plays hard night in, night out. He plays hard for the time that he's in. Whenever he gets out, he tries his best to really just keep himself loose to where he can get back on the floor and do the things that he do good. I know that uh, all games are equally important, but given that this is going to be a four-game road trip followed by two more on the road, is there a sense that this is a very important road trip? Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, all what, four games. What What makes it uh, stand out in that regard, Gaff? I uh, mean, you know, we're going to play a lot of great teams. You know, this is the league, so every team we go out and play, they're – going to have guys that are going to come out on the floor and they're going to try to put us away early and or late, well, whatever instance. So we just have to come out and play night in, night out. It's going to be a tough road trip, but we can do it. I have faith in this team. I've never, I would say, not had faith in this team. You know, from the beginning to the end, I'm going to stand behind my guys and I'm going to tell them, come out, we can beat whoever. We just got to play like it. Thank you, Daniel. Mm -hmm. Neil? Hey, Daniel, when you're describing the frustration that the team has right now, how is that, you know, trying 
to be communicated or voiced in the locker room that, you know, okay, we're going through this now, but, you know, we need to fight through it together. I mean, it's a long game, you know. We always come in the locker room and say we have another 24 on the clock. We can either figure it out now or we're going to get our ass kicked later. Plain and simple. And I guess, is there anybody after this loss that is speaking up that's saying, you know, hey, we need to turn this around or is it kind of just, you know, quiet and everybody understands the assignment? I know for sure. You know, we got a lot of guys in the locker room to talk, whether it's me, you know, which is rare. You know, I just kind of sit there and let the vets do most of the talking. But, you know, Brad talks, you know, KCP talks, Trez talks, and whoever really just have, has anything on their mind or on their chest. And they come in and they let it be known, you know, whether it's we need to figure out the frustration or figure out what's going on or, you know, little things like that. Or if it's just positive. That's the main thing. So either or, we have a lot of positive talk throughout the locker room, whether we have a lot of frustration or not. Thanks, Daniel. Mm -hmm. I think that's it, Gaff. Thank you. Thank you. We will get started with in-person questions. Brad, uh, Wes kind of mentioned as much, but in the second half, what do you feel like was the, the primary issue? Wes said something about mentality, again, kind of the same thing you guys have been seeing or dealing with. Uh, first one, prison alert and save Jesus Christ. Um, it's kind of tough to pinpoint, honestly. Uh, they were making a lot of shots. Kind of, mm, it's like, uh, I don't know what it is. They just kind of wanted it a little bit more. I don't even know if that's even the right word to say because we were in the game, but it just made more plays. Uh, they were just more aggressive on both ends of the floor than we were. In the offense, I think we just we couldn't make shots and we turned the ball over too much. How are you personally kind of processing and making sense of what seems like to us, and maybe it's different to you, like a pretty drastic flip from the incredibly strong starts to the inconsistencies of late, I guess? Uh, I mean, we're still trying to, trying to pinpoint it, you know. Um, it's, it's a work in progress, and obviously we didn't have coups tonight. That kind of may have may or may not have thrown with them off, but uh, regardless, it's kind of been like that all year for us, so that shouldn't have, shouldn't have phased us. Um, but at the same time, we, I don't, it's not really just one thing that we pinpointed on, you know, it's just, we all individually got to be better and collectively we gotta, we gotta be there for the next man, you know, help the helper, especially on defense. We gotta be a lot better. We gotta communicate better. Um, and we just gotta make shots. We, we really gotta make shots. Um, so it's, it's a, it's a little, it's a little bit of everything, you know, it's kind of everything mixed into the pot of why. We're kind of going down this little little struggle route, but um, you know, I think they're all fixable. You know, they're all things we can control more or less. You know, our effort plays and our energy, boxing out, rebounding, not turning the ball over. You know, um, shooting with confidence. You know, those are things we can control. You know, so I think if we just focus on those things. We'll be okay. What goes through your mind when you uh, hear the news about Coos this morning? Uh it's tough. I mean, like, it's a whirlwind. Um, obviously, you, you pray for his health and wish, you know, nothing's crazy and that's it's the false positive. Um, but if he ends up having COVID, you know, you definitely, you know, you wish you know, no ill will on him and he's able to come back healthy. And um, obviously, you start thinking about teammates and the contact tracing and everything of that nature. So um, it's weird because actually, I didn't know if I was going to play tonight. I just knew for sure that being being who I am and being unvaxxed and then what happened last year, I didn't I thought for sure I wasn't gonna play. You remember the contact tracing? Yeah, just from contact tracing. Um so uh to hear that, you know, I was going everything was cool and they they were gonna retest a few guys, like, you know, that was that was all right, you know. Um but it's definitely something we gotta we gotta keep our eye on moving forward. The league is I mean COVID is spreading again. So we, we all gotta be safe and do our due diligence of Make sure we do the right thing. The uh, trajectory of this team has kind of paralleled the play of uh, Spencer Dinwiddie and Montrose Harrell. They were great to start the season, been a little bit less consistent lately. Um, what do you think has been different about those two guys? Uh, in all fairness, Chase, I've been shitty all year. So I'm not even going to sit here and, and talk about two other guys who, who've really been helping our team out, you know. Um, so I, I'll put that on me before them. Um, you know, I have to be better. I have to lead better. I have to produce and lead this team like I want to. Um, so 
Trez and, and Spence will be fine. Um, I think we got to I think we got to give Spence more opportunities to work. Uh, kind of let him go, and we're we're kind of pushing him to go, 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 because we need him. You know, we need him to attack and be aggressive. And Trez the same thing. We got we got to get Trez the ball more. You know, uh, we got his energy. We feed off of that. You know, we can't. We can't just have him just running up and down the floor and not touching it, running up and down the floor. You know, he's competing with some big bigs, you know, so we, we got to help him out, rebounds on defense, uh, pick and roll coverages. Like, it's a lot, you know, we can, I mean, just pinpoint offense all we want, but uh, there's, there's a lot more to the game that we could be better and help them too out of, um, for sure. But it starts with me. It doesn't, you know, I got to be better. I guess on a related note, you know, I think it was after the last game, you talked about the turnovers and you said, especially you, you know, be better <laughs> yeah. at turnovers. And I think you had six tonight. Um, just what, what has, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> just what has been the issue for you turning the ball over this year? Uh, I mean, it's an adjustment. I mean, getting used to knowing where we're supposed to be in our spots, um, you know, kind of making passes that aren't there. Sometimes I get caught dribbling in between too many guys. Um, and it's, it's, it's an adjustment, you know, heck, sometimes we don't catch the ball and I can't, you know, I can't be, can be mad at that. Heck, I don't catch the ball all the time either. So, I mean, it's, it's always happen, you know, as long as I'm always a firm believer and as long as they're aggressive turnovers and not kind of careless and you know, just whatever turnovers that lead to, lead to points, you know, I think we're okay. But um, obviously you don't, we don't want any turnovers, but I mean, we're humans, they're going to happen, uh, but they should be aggressive uh, more than anything. And what have you noticed about how teams attack your defense now compared to early this season? Well, they they attack it with a purpose, that's for sure. You know, they um, they really exploit our matchups. You know, they do they do a lot of you know kind of you know pointing out who they want to go one on one against because we we switch a lot. So a lot of that is is predicated on our one on one defense and our pride in that. And we all got to be better. We got to help the next man and. Um, you know, whoever's probably not our best defender on the floor, we have to make sure that we're talking, communicating, and try to get the ball out of like Mitch D. Mitch hands, you know. Um, so I think that's a that's a big area that hurts us on defense. You know, we got to be better one on one, and then it's tough because when us guards don't guard the ball, keep the ball in front of us, you know, that puts a lot of pressure on our bigs to make a decision whether to step up. They step up as a lob automatically, you know. So. It's tough. We got as guards, we got to be better keeping the ball in front of us um, and putting a lot of pressure on the bigs on the backside. Uh, Gaff mentioned energy as something the team can improve, and I think you just did it as well. How do you do that? How do you create that? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, but I mean, I think it honestly starts individually. Uh, you know, day by day basis, you wake up and you come to work and. You know, the objective is to get better. You know, how can we get better? And you push your teammates to be better and get better. Um, and then ultimately, you got to remember that this game is fun. You know, I think sometimes we lose sight of that. You know, it's it's definitely a business. It's definitely our career, our life, you know, but this is fun. You know, we played this game when we were younger, um, you know, to enjoy it. We had a passion about it. Um, I think that's what we got to get back to, you know, get back to the fun, the, the, the energetic part of it. Like, energy is just... Just feel good, you know. Um, feel good can't just be making shots, you know. Feel good has to be, you know, your body feels good, your mental is right, um, you're ready to go, you know, you're just excited for the moment. You're just being the moment, you know. Uh, I think we got to just get back to having fun, being passionate about the game. And I think that'll, that'll propel our energy in the right direction. I was going to ask you about that after you mentioned kind of finding the joy and where you are in finding the joy and how much harder that is to do when you're losing. Mm. Uh... I mean, it's tough. I mean, we were 15, 12 now. Uh, I mean, so it's, I mean, we still have a solid record. You know, we're not, we're not kicking ourselves in the foot. But, you know, we, we got to eliminate the bad habits um, for sure. Uh, but you, this this league, you never get too high, never get too low. I would think that could, I would say that, would, that should be our approach to it. Um, you know, because it's, it's easy to just fall into the trap of, you know, only being joyful when things are going right for you, you know, and life isn't like that, you know? Um, so you just, you really have to learn to excel. Okay. It's a bad game. It's not your night, but okay. What else can you contribute? You know, what else can you do to impact the game? You know, as long as it impacts winning, you know, you should feel great about that. Um, and I think we all have that within us. And, uh, I think we all, I think we all definitely kind of think like that in a way, but, 
I think we talked about it last game. Like sometimes we all want to make the big play. We all want to do well. And sometimes it ends up not being a big play. And it's not necessarily a selfish thing, but it's a everybody wants to do well. Everybody wants to get their play right. Everybody wants to contribute. So it's it's kind of figuring it out. It's figuring it out. But the joy of it, you know, nobody should ever take the joy from you. You know, this is something that God blessed you with. And it's only 450 of us, you know. People are going to hate you. People are going to love you. But you're one of 450, you know, so understand that. Take advantage of it. But understand that to whom much is given, much is expected too. So it's a lot that comes with the, the territory. But joy should never be taken from us. Yeah. Josh? Brad, we know that you are your own toughest critic. Um, how are you handling um, your frustration with what you perceive to be your own play? Uh, I'm not too hard. On, I'm hard on myself, but this I'm like, I'm not driving myself mad. You know, um, I'm, just, I'm the ball will fall in eventually. Uh, and the player will definitely be where I want it to be. Um, but I just keep pushing, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a day by day thing, you know, to now this game's over, we move on to Denver. Uh, and it's, it's an adjustment for sure. You know, you, we're still learning things on the fly, you know, teams are still going to run two, three guys at me, you know, so it's still going to be, you know, it's still going to be an adjustment every game, every night, it's going to be tough. So, uh, I just stay confident in myself and continue to stay on my routine, uh, continue to play hard and continue to incorporate and create for my teammates if my stuff isn't going. Um, continue to guard best I can and uh, let, that, let that propel my game, you know. Um, it's totally different than last year. I, and I, I think that's where I want everybody to kind of just stop thinking about, like, it's a totally different team, different dynamic, you know. Um, granted, that bar is set high, but and I have goals to achieve that, but at the same time, it's a work in progress. It's, it is a work for sure. You anticipated my next question. Thank you. Uh, you know, how much different is the way these teams are going after you with their defense and bringing more pressure to you uh, than they did, uh, as you said, last year? Uh, it's, it's, it's tough because every team is different. You know, some teams switch, some teams double, some teams just sit in the drop. Um, some teams load up the paint and force you to kick it out, you know. Uh, so I think it's just, it's honestly, you know, kind of figuring out how to manipulate the defenses and figuring out how to manip how I can get my game off. Uh, but at the same time, how I can create for my teammates, you know, because if I'm getting doubled and tripled and defenses are loaded, somebody has to be open. Um, you know, so a lot of times it's, it's me with a hockey assist. It's me making the pass at least to, you know, the shot. So. Um, and I'm fine with those situations. You know, if, if teams want to double me, that's fine. You know, I'll, I'll get off it and, you know, trust other guys to make plays. And, um, but you know, it's, it's definitely, uh, it's, that's a work too. You know, we're just, we're figuring out ways and plays that we can implement to keep teams from doubling, keep teams from top side and, you know, keep teams from kind of junking up the game a little bit, you know, and it's, uh, we're trying to figure it out. Uh, we've, we've throw, we threw some plays in over the last couple of days that work and, uh, you know, some quick hitters that, you know, keep teams off their off their guard. It's tough against set defenses. You know, I think that's another thing, too. You know, we got to get out and transition a little bit more, play a little bit faster. Um, I think that'll free up everybody, for sure. Thank you, Brett. Yeah. Last question, Neil. Hey, Brad, on a non-game note, what did you think of Rui getting everybody watches, and how do you think that maybe, you know, helps him integrate himself to a team where there are a lot of new faces? Uh, Rui, Rui was secret senator this year. Uh, you know, he he got us some nice nice G-Shocks, he, courtesy of his his little his little deals he has, the, the infinite amount that he has. Uh, but, no, Rui, it's, it's always great to be able to have him around. I think, if I'm not mistaken, he's traveling with us on this trip. So, um, you know, it's just good that I always said at the beginning of the year, like, we just want you around. Like, it's good to just have him around, uh, you know, to see him, see him work out, learning the plays, you know, trying to, you know, get used to being around his teammates. Like it's, it's, it's definitely uplifting. You know, you definitely, obviously we still, we still want him to take his time when he's ready, he's ready. Um, but 
you know, it's definitely exciting news to be able to see him, see him back with us for sure. Thanks, Brad. That's it, Brad. Thank you for your time. No problem. Thank you, guys.